He can do almost anything. I mean to tell you. But I found out that Bishop can do almost anything as well, but he doesn't like to tell everybody because then they'll ask him to do it. I'm like, what's up with that? <laughs> there, I just told on him. <laughs> okay, well, I came with a word today for sure for you. And um, God wants to do something in our lives today. So why don't we just go ahead and get started? You know what time it is. It's time for... Oh, goodness. Now, I had a couple problems with this particular um, word, and one was that this song was so old. It was making me feel like, hello, uh, listen, Lord, obviously, um, everybody in the sanctuary is a lot younger than Bishop and I, and um, will they even know this song? But I guess it doesn't matter because it's about the word, right? And, and what, I mean, did you hear what God said? He said, Oh dear, well, apparently he thinks there's, um, he wants to talk about shame today. And apparently he thinks you can't dance through. Actually, I thought when I first heard this, I was waking up and I, I thought it was, I thought the lyrics said, or what I heard in my head was, shame on you if you can't break through. I'm going to go with that one. Then when I was listening to it in the car driving, I, the, that portion of the lyric, I thought it said, shame, shame, shame on you if you can't pass through. Yeah. But really, when you look up the words, it says, shame on you if you can't dance too. You can't dance also, right? right. Did you know that, there's, that God likes it when his people dance? Oh. Do you know that dancing is a form of praise? It's a form, I, and you know what? It, it breaks up the hard places in your life. So shame on you if you can't dance too. Oh, come on. I know some of you are like, okay, I'm going to tell him, Pastor Aaron, he doesn't dance. <laughs> We've been places and, um, and he's, you know, of course, I want to get out there and dance. And, and he's like, <laughs> I mean, as long as I've known him, he doesn't dance. But it doesn't mean that you can't get your groove on. I mean, when something, when you're in the groove, you know, everything moves a little easier. Right? I mean, a door that's off track, you can't pull that thing for nothing. Right? It's got to get in the groove. How many of you wake up in the morning and you go, um, yeah, I'm just not in the groove yet today. Right? Especially when someone's talking your ear off at 530 in the morning and you're not in the groove yet. Shh. Right? Do you ever shush somebody that early in the morning? I do. <clears throat> but you got, we got to get in the groove, but here's what I heard, um, or here's what I really, uh, really see in this, that there is a move coming, and God says, whether you choose to dance to or not, you're not going to stop it. It's going to move. The move is going to move. There are some things that are going to move. There, I'm creating a move. I'm creating a movement in this season. And it doesn't matter if you don't want to dance too. That, that, it's your loss. But, I'm gonna, but I feel like the Lord is saying, get in the groove. Come on. You got to dance too. And shame on you if you don't want to dance to the groove and to a new move. I like um, Brett's smile. It keeps me going. It's, uh, he's he's going to be my temperature today. Um, so he's my thermometer today. So, you know, when he stops smiling, it means I'm done preaching. <laughs> he's got permagrin on right now. Trust me. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, studying my notes this morning, uh, 6.30 in the morning, I heard the Lord say, my church is hiding in their shame. My church, will you feel that? My church is hiding in their shame and I want to set them free. 
He said, my church has been thinking that they, nobody sees their shame, but I see their shame and I want to deliver them of that today. I want to help them walk through the door of escape, the door of deliverance that they can walk and be, and know that I am their God and they are my people and stop trying to hide behind their fig leaves. My church is hiding in their shame. He says, I want to deal with shame today. I want to talk about it. I want to um, explain a few things about it. And I want to make you free. I want to set you free. I'm going to lead you to the door because the door's been open all year. And I almost want to say shame on us for not walking through the door on our own. But he's saying, I'm coming down here right now. And I'm going to I'm extending my hand, and those of you who need some coaxing, those of you who need a little guidance, it's right here. I'm going to lead you to it. I'm going to lead you through it so you can get to the other side and be free. Yes. Amen. Did you know that repeating a word three times in, in a Hebrew structural element, wait, let me say this again. Repeating a word three times is a Hebrew structural element for poetry. I did not know that just thought you might be interested. And did you also know that it takes three times to establish a pattern of repetition? You've heard, you've heard me say, and you've heard Bishop say, I hear the third time. Now I realize that's biblical. <laughs> Shame is a common problem that everyone's dealing with today. I, I, you know what? I'm like one of those open books and to a fault, actually. Um, I told Bishop this morning in the, back, in the conference room, I said, the last two services, <clears throat> I've shared some things from the pulpit that you don't even know about. One of them is we're going to hike every national park in the U.S. Um, you know, and I don't know how long that, that will take, but we're going to do it. And then Wednesday night, he heard for the first time at church that I'm going to have a mobile garden. And then Pastor Aaron ruined it because um, I lost my enthusiasm for it once he preached the message on Sunday about uh, fruit. And I'm like, well, I can't grow a fruit tree in that mobile garden. It's not deep enough. It'll freeze in Michigan and die and still won't produce the next year. So that kind of, so there, there goes that. But I also did warn him that there might be something he's going to find out today for the first time. I just thought I'd let them know ahead of time. Yeah. But we're talking about uh, three times, right? This would be the third time <laughs> um, that he will hear something for the first time. Not only three times in a row, but the third time, right? But listen, God wants to establish something in your life today. And um, I, I want you to know that, like, he knows he knows the shame. As good as you are at hiding it, he knows what it is. <clears throat> so shame actually comes in three different aspects. And the first one is probably obvious to you. Shame comes from sin. Just missing the mark. Let's not get super, you know, you know spiritual uh, sin. No, it's just, you missed it. That's all. You missed the mark. I've missed the mark many times, right? But that's how, that's one way that shame can come. The second is, shame is a warning device. In other words, it, it should be a, like a flag that says, um, okay, something's not right. Here's a warning. It's like a week ago, we had several lights on the dash of our car. We're like, what happened? What's going on with this car? And, um, but it's a warning that there's something wrong. We don't know what's wrong. And we still don't know what's wrong. And I'm not looking too hard, quite honestly. <clears throat> the lights went away except for one. So I think, you know, it's better. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's the way a woman thinks. That's right, Christine. So uh, really, but it is, um, shame is a warning signal that says there's something that needs to be fixed. That's really what it's about, right? There's something that needs to be fixed. And there's no, <laughs> there's no shame in that, <laughs> that something needs to be fixed, right? Um, and then the third aspect is shame is bondage. It, it really is. Some people are, are completely in bondage because of shame. And um, let, 
I looked up, of course, I always start with the dictionary, shame on me. Um, but really, if you looked up the word shame in, in the Bible, in the Hebrew, it means confusion. Can you believe that? Confusion. Do you know how many people are confused today? Should we talk about that for a while? Okay, no, moving right along. Because you know where I was going to go with that. No, but confusion. Oh, Pastor Riley's like, don't go there. Oh, I love this body. I love my church. <clears throat> No, but confusion just is just really, I don't know what to do. Right? I don't know what to do about this issue or this thing that's wrong. And I, 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 just, I just don't know. I don't know what to do and I don't know what to do about it. Right? Have you been there? I have you been there? I have been there. There was a season in Bishop and I's life about 10 some years ago, and we found, it was like we started noticing each other saying, I don't know what to do about it. Like we start, like our conversation, both of us were doing it, and I'm like, this has got to stop. Why are we saying we don't know about it? We don't know what to do. That's wrong, right? But that's confusion, and God wants to deal with that portion of shame today. Shame also means confounded and it means, get this, write it down, it means delay. I mean, this is the second time God's talking to us about delay, right? Ask and you shall receive, but what's in between the ask and the receive, that three seconds of delay, and that's the most vulnerable time? Well, shame means delay. It also means dishonor, reproach, disgrace, disappointed. It means becomes dry or become dry. I'm positive that's why, one of the reasons why God wants to deal with shame today is because he can look across the church and the land and go, man, that's dry. Uh, the best I can hope for is that it'll catch on fire. You hear what I'm saying? The good news behind a dry place is that you can be set on fire pretty easy. And God's going to light you up today. He's going to have to set you on fire because he's, not, he's like, no more of the dry places. No more can you operate in what I'm, the move I'm about to move you in and being dry. Amen. <clears throat> so you might be one of these people that go, I have no shame. But, you know. Pastor Aaron added a new word to the, um, the list of works of the flesh. Lying. <laughs> Last Sunday. So I wrote it right in my Bible. <laughs> Lying is part of that list. Um, everybody who is hiding shame hides, hides shame in three ways. Three ways. And the first way is, you know, you um, put on this holy facade, this righteous, this religious facade. It's a facade. It's not real. A second way is, you know, you want to numb this pain of shame that you want to hide it. So you're hiding behind medicine. You're hiding behind drugs, like over-the-counter drugs or prescribed drugs is what I mean. Or maybe just down-the-road drugs. I don't know. But, you know, <laughs> drugs, they're everywhere. My students used to tell me so. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then the third uh, way that people hide their sin, or excuse me, hide their shame, is that it's not their fault. I blame somebody else. And that's their justification that that shame is not on me. That's them. That's their issue. That's their problem. Are you listening? But God has a solution to it. I got, we knew, we, you knew that, right? God has a solution to it. And um, it's kind of like, well, you probably know the portion of scripture, but why don't you go there with me? Genesis 3, 7. And so it, early in this word, I would ask you, do you know what you are hiding from? Do you know the shame that you are hiding from? And God is um, here to help you, but he's also here to confront it. Not in front of anyone, but to confront it to you individually. 
The only way things get fixed is to confront them. I am a confrontational person, but not to be, um, you know, mean or rude or anything. Although I had a five-year-old tell me three days ago, they they made the statement. Um, you know, they said, "Well, so and so doesn't want." doesn't want you to um, come tomorrow, I guess is what she said. And I said, oh, yeah, how come? And this five-year-old says, I don't know, maybe it's because she thinks you're rude. Get over here. (laughs) Don't worry, I won't be back. (laughs) But you know, anyway, Uh, confrontation. We got to confront some things. That's the only way you fix it. It's the only way you fix it, right? So Genesis 3, 7, and it says, um, and so we're talking, we're going to talk about the first um, aspect of, of shame, and it's called missing the mark, and Adam missed the mark, right? And it says, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons, in verse eight. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And here comes the confrontation. And God says to Adam, where are you? It's almost like God saying to you today, what are you hiding behind? But more than that, what is it that you're hiding? He knows, just like he knew where Adam was. But he's still gonna ask the question because it makes you give the answer. So Adam says, I heard um, your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And so he says, who told you that you were naked and have you eaten of the tree that I told you not to? Right? Verse 12, have you eaten of the tree that I told you or that I said do not eat from? And, uh, the, and so verse 12 says, and Adam says, well, the woman who you gave me, that's the problem, right? She gave me of the tree and I ate it. I did what she asked me. Um, and then 13 says, and the Lord God said unto the woman, well, what have you done? Oh my goodness. What responsibility, right? What have you done? And the woman said, well, it was the serpent that beguiled me and I did eat. So even, so missing the mark, here's what we're talking about. There's some shame here. They missed the mark, right? And it doesn't matter who they wanted to blame. And it could be even, you know, we can even blame the devil because he's got his hand in a lot of things, but it doesn't, it still doesn't matter when we miss the mark. That is what happens as shame occurs. Now it, it happens to be this, um, you know, I wrote down this emotion that's caused by consciousness of guilt. You know, I have, I have felt that. I know that I have been guilty. And I have, I have felt that emotion of that. You know, it's that emotion of, you know, you uh, came up short and you knew your behavior was improper. This is called missing the mark, friends. And, and this is called like having real flesh and we're gonna miss the mark, Right? That's one aspect aspect of shame. And that's what the Lord just wants to show you is that there are three ways that shame comes. Now, listen, if you don't know how it came, once you get delivered today, it will come back. That's why I'm, we're going to talk about this. You go, well, just get on to the good news. We all know we got shame. Just get us delivered. (laughs) Well, there's some wisdom in the learning of how did it come? How did I get here, right? You know, 26 years um, later, how did I get to be 30 pounds heavier? Actually, it's more than that. Uh, How did I get here? (laughs) Shoes. But it's missing the mark, and we have to be able, we just have to know how it comes, right? And so um, when we disobey God's word, did you know it brings disqualification, you disqualify yourself, you see, and when you're disqualified, you, you feel left out, you feel abandoned, you feel like God's not moving in your life, and, and once again, here comes the shame on you. You, you, you take it all in, right? 
it's true, it happens. And, and also then comes regret. Oh my goodness, right? Regret. So, but I love the fact that here's the solution. You probably knew it was coming. Deacon Heath already shared it. First John 1, 8, it says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we will confess our sin, oh, I, didn't, I wanna just hide behind that. I don't wanna have to confess it. See, that's the problem. That's why the body of Christ isn't free because they refuse to confess their sin because they would rather put on the facade of religious or, or uh, uh, on goes the other things, right? Or, or blame somebody else or cover it in numbness with, I'll just take some more drugs, right? So um, it, it's, it, it, if, if you will confess your sin, if we will confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive, he forgives I know you know this, but I just need you to hear it the third time. <laughs> he forgives. <clears throat> he forgives your sin and, and he cleanses you from it all. All of the unrighteousness, all of the pain, all of the disgrace, all of the regrets. He, he'll, he can cleanse you from it. What good is it to, be, um, to confess your sin if you don't go to the extra mile and let him cleanse you? Because you're still dirty, you still have it, unless he, you know, does the flush and gives you a cleanse, right? Amen. So um, the second thing is, the second aspect of shame is warning signs, and there are a few of these. <clears throat> Go with me to 2 Samuel 13, 11. I'm gonna hang out here for just a while, but I'm gonna read a few scriptures. So again, 2 Samuel Chapter 13, verse 11. The reason I feel like I need to read this is because I want to set it up. I might skip a few, but we're going to start with verse 1. 2 Samuel 13. After this, Absalom, the son of David, had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, and the son of David, loved her. And he was so distressed over his sister that he became sick, for she was a virgin. And it was improper for him to do anything about it. Verse three. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab and the son of, well, the son of David's brother. And he was a very crafty man. Don't you love the people that, are, that you're surrounded with that are gonna to begin to give you suggestions that probably aren't the right suggestions? Verse four. And he said to him, why are you the king's son becoming thin, thinner day after day? Will you not tell me? And he said, I love my sister, but not in the way I should love my sister. Sick. I love my sister. And so Jonadab says to him, I got an idea. Verse five. Lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill. And when your father comes to see you, say to him, please let my sister, Tamar, come and give me some food and prepare the food in my sight that I may see it and eat it from her hand. Now this suggestion is coming from someone else, right? <clears throat> Just because somebody suggests something doesn't mean you need to act on it. In fact, you probably need to stand up, pray about it, get some wisdom on it and confront them right to their face. Go, that is not a good idea. Right? Call them out on it. No, I'm not doing that. See down the road what that will produce. A bad suggestion, right? That you act on. Verse six, it says, then Amnon lay down and pretend to be ill. And on goes the story. The bottom line is it worked. He was ill and he told his father, you know, bring me my sister that she could make me some cakes and feed it to me. And, and the king said, sure. All right, so that takes us down to... Um, dun, dun, verse nine. And she took the pan, Tamar, the sister, took the pan and placed them out before him, but he refused to eat. <clears throat> and so Amnon said, have everyone go out. And so everybody left. Everybody went out. Everybody left. They were alone. And then comes the real problem. 
here's what we need to see. God says, there are people trying to deceive you all the day long, and you need to be wise enough to see it coming. You need to be wise enough before something even happens to see it coming. Tamar should have saw this coming. Verse 10, then Ammon said to Amnon, rather, said to Tamar, bring the food into my bedroom that I may eat from your hand. Okay, nobody's here. Nobody's in the house. Why can't you just eat from my hand in the kitchen or on the couch? Oh, but you want me to come to your bedroom. This is in the Bible. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them to Amnon, her brother, in the bedroom. Verse 11 says, Now when she had brought them to him to eat, he took hold of her and he said to her, Come lie with me, my sister. But she said, No, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing should be done in Israel. Do not do this disgraceful thing that will cause shame. And verse 13 says, and this is Tamar talking, and I, where could I, where could I take my shame? And as for you, you would be like one of the fools in Israel. Now, therefore, please speak to the king for he will not withhold me from you. In other words, she's like, well, hey, I'm going to try and like coax him to talk to leadership because they'll probably keep me safe. They'll probably make sure that that doesn't happen. Right? So mistake number one, she didn't see this coming when he invites her to her bedroom. But in her defense, why should she? It's her brother, for heaven's sakes. It's getting kind of serious. <clears throat> Verse 14 says, however, he would not heed to her voice and in him being stronger than her, he forced her and lay with her. So there you have it. Shame has begun. God says, there's a lot of people who have been violated in my body. And some of it is still in secret. And some of it, some of it is still even going on. But the worst part of it is, even the things that have stopped, people have carried the shame of it forward. And they, they can't just get free of it. They can't just like let it go. They, can't, they, they haven't been able to. It's not that they don't want to. They haven't been able to. See, wh why does God give us a word because he wants to deal with an issue. He wants to deal with the problems. He wants to deal, um, he wants you to be free, but he wants to, but you can't just be free. You got, we got, sometimes we have to deal with what's wrong, right? <clears throat> I hope all we need in our car is a new battery and those, all those lights will go away. But we, st <laughs> but we still have to deal with it. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, verse 15 says, Amnon hated her, ex hated her. What? He went from loving her so much, and now in verse 15, he hates her. He hates her exceedingly. So much that it overshadowed any love that he ever had for her. And he wanted her to go and never come back. In fact, he told her, get out. Terrible, right? And so she says, no, indeed, the evil of sending me away is worse than the other thing that you did to me. But he would not listen. Listen, sometimes that is why uh, a behavior pattern continues. It's because the thing that it, um, it's just like this verse says, um, the, the cutoff or the, it is more shameful, right, than, than sometimes the actual act itself. I don't know this firsthand. I, I'm just going, here's what the Lord gave me um, for you. But I do know that it is a problem in society today. And I am mortified with the things that are happening in our culture. And, um, and sometimes it's long ago, and sometimes it's, you know, not that long ago. But the point is, the thing that God wants to put his finger on today is that. Shame on you. 
So he's got a solution and he knows that, he, um, that shame is, is an issue today. And I am not here to, um, you know, uh, again, you know, why are we talking about all this bad stuff, you know? Um, shame is bad stuff. But yeah, shame is bad stuff. Remember I said that we're talking about it, what are the warning signs? Well, that's a warning sign, right? Th that, that situation is a warning sign, but so there are many other warning signs. But the, one of the biggest warning signs is uh, sin from sex, sexual sins, Right? And, and you might go, well, <clears throat> that does, that's not my shame. Well, okay, we'll get to yours. There's a few other ones. <laughs> um, so, shame in that sense of uh, 2 Samuel, it's very, very similar. But it also means, in addition to the other words I gave you, it means to wound, to taunt or insult, to make ashamed, to blush. Basically, I look at that and go, it's embarrassing, right? There's things that happen to us um, that we experience that are embarrassing. And so I come back to, you know, and everywhere you look online and, and whatever, it, you know, it's shame from sexual abuse, but I just heard the word violation. And I don't know if you think that's one of the same or not, but the point is, is people have been violated and they are still being violated. And the, and the Lord wants to give you the truth and the matter, and he wants to make you free from it. Whether it's happening or still happening or whatever. So, you know, like when people are violated, it causes shame that they carry for years, right? And, um, but here's what, here's, here's an answer. It's not easy. Forgiveness. Yeah. And sometimes people who have been violated think that if they forgive this individual, then that lets that individual off the hook. But that's not so. When you walk in forgiveness in that particular act or whatever, however you were violated, that gets you free. Yeah. Right? And, and that's what we want. It, it does not justify their wrongdoing. You were violated if that Tamar was violated. It does not justify it just because you forgave them, right? But it does allow God to do some things. And it, and it is the power that comes from, forgive, for, from forgiveness that can make you free from the hurt and the shame of these things that happen to you, that happen to maybe people that you know, and it releases you. And that's what you need is a release from the stronghold of the bondage that it created. Amen? Okay, so... Another warning sign, uh, sexual sins, right? Well, that might be part of it. But 1 Corinthians 10, 8 says, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in a day. Three and 20,000, hello. 23,000 fell. Uh, I learned this in Bible school, right? If you, took, if you were in Bible school, you know this. And I learned at that point, it never left me. Sexual sins, it works. The devil's still using it. What, what is the root of shame? Well, sexual sins could be the root of some people's shame. It's huge today. It's still huge today. It's still going on today. Um, shame can also, <clears throat> a warning is um, from carelessness, right? Thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. But we can get so wrapped up in life that we become careless about a few things. I know for myself, I have, I knew, especially looking back, I knew when I was careless with a few things. And I knew, I can look back and say, that's the root of why I was careless with that. I am ashamed of myself that I still struggle with time. I know none of you knew that. <laughs> Today's my day of breakthrough. I need to get free. Listen, I mean to tell you, do you not think I have tried? So what's the problem? Oh yeah, the bishop is talking about vegetables. Okay, I guess so. But what I want you to know, and I'm a little bit leery about saying this because it's gonna probably sound like I'm justifying and I, I don't, I know I want to be free. I don't want to hide behind anything. I don't want to justify. I am time challenged. Yeah. 
I just am. But let, make no mistake, I was time challenged whether I was going to my work, going to my job. And you know, school starts at a certain time. <clears throat> and I was time challenged whether I was coming to church. You know the stories, Mrs. Anderson, get in the car. Okay, it doesn't matter where I was going and what I was doing, I, I'm consistently time challenged. But, but it's sin, yes, it's sin. It, and, I'm, and I'm ashamed. <laughs> yes, it's terrible. But here's what I, here, I wanna say this. I know people that are only time challenged in certain situations. If you own your own business, you're never late. If you're paying for, you know, a massage, you're never late, although I have been. You know, I don't think I fit in the mold of, of it all, but, but, but what I'll say is look at your life and go, what are the things that I am late for consistently and then come to terms with that's not as important to you as other things? Okay, <clears throat> carelessness, that's what we're talking about. I don't know how we got on the time thing. Yeah, because you're in a hurry. And I guess that's what it was because of the root of being time challenged and I'm late, I can become careless, try and take a shortcut. And shortcuts take you longer, right? Um, it can create accidents. Um, I, you know, I, yeah, I just have, I know the Lord like this, wow, just careless, being careless. And I scared myself so bad that I, it changed me forever, but it didn't fix the uh, late problem. It just changed uh, the results of that, of maybe driving too fast. Right? <clears throat> so, um, you know, carelessness, that's how accidents happen. It, you know, it's an unfortunate event, but it results especially from carelessness, being in a hurry, or you're ignorant to whatever it is, right? Just being careless. Um, however, we, God has an answer today, no matter if you've dealt with that and the shame from that carelessness. Um, God is a God of miracles today. I know someone um, who doesn't teach at my former school, but is affiliated with it. And he's a young man and he hit somebody. Um, he was driving a car and he hit somebody that was walking. And that thing, the individual, I, I'm sorry that I don't know if the, if the individual lived or not. But what I do know is that young man dealt with the shame of the accident, of the situation. I don't know for sure if it was carelessness or not. I don't know the facts. But I do know that individual well enough to know it taunted him and it affected him for many, many years. And so, <clears throat> you know, shame comes in all forms, right? And this, these are the warning signs. Let's be, be mindful about being careless, Sometimes shame uh, comes because you put it on yourself. You know, you don't, you, you think of yourself as you don't measure up. I don't know if you've ever thought that. You, you have measured yourself against a standard that is either unrealistic or, or, or whatever. But the point is you put that shame on yourself. Nobody else put it on you. You put it on your yourself. We're talking about the why shame comes. And, you know, I love what Bobby Jones said. You know, he says golf is a mental game. And he says, um, really, the course that you play is like a five-inch course right between your ears. It's not really about the opponent. It's, about, it's, a, it's mental. It's about you. That is what this is. Shame that you put on yourself. It's mental. It's what you think. It's what you have, you know, you have begun to believe, right? Shame from money problems. Oh no, we're not gonna have to talk about that, are we? <clears throat> These are warning signs. If you're broke, that's a warning sign, 
Proverbs 13, 18. Poverty and shame shall be to him who refuses instruction, but he that regards reproof shall be honored. Listen, nothing is more annoying when you give somebody instruction and they don't do it and they're still crying poor mouth. When you gave them the answer, but we have the, we have, God has an answer too. And it's called the divine order of giving. It's called 12 blessings of a tither. Why are we hiding behind or why are we delaying God's solution to money problems? It's an easy fix. Get a job, become a tither. It's an easy fix. 12 blessings of a tither, the divine order of giving. I used to have uh, worked for a, a, a great leader, not the previous one, but the one before. <clears throat> and when, if I didn't walk in his office with a paper and pencil, he wouldn't talk to me. Because he was, uh, he's there to solve problems. And, and if he did not think that I was ready to hear the answer, he would not give it to me. He did two things that he trained me really well. One was don't ever come in my office without paper and pencil because what I give you is, is like gold and, I, and you're not gonna ask me the second time because I'm too busy for that. And the second thing he trained me to, to say or to think before I went in there, what's my, uh, what's my solution about the issue? What's my solution? May not be the right one, but at least I've given it enough thought. What's my solution about the problem? Don't come here and waste my time. Don't waste my time and, and ask me for instructions and then not do them. Okay, so that's, um, that's a warning sign. Okay, and we're gonna move along here a little faster. So shame from health problems. Third John 2, we know this scripture. We probably do, right? But I'll quote it for you. Be whole, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren um, comes and testifies of the truth and even for the, those that walk in the truth. And I have no greater joy when my children walk in truth. Why are we delaying what needs to change to get rid of the problem? Yeah. Sometimes we know, we know what to do, but we don't do it. Right? I, yeah. Again, I'm ashamed that I've been out of school since June 10th and I have not golfed once. I've only rode my bike twice and I haven't even picked up a weight. Because, you know, my bucket list, I'm going to get strong and I'm going to play golf. Those are my two things. I know you want, Bishop wanted me to, to lift sod and move it around. I'm like, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> and then Deacon Heath wants me to move, you know, you know, stack wood. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, touche. Health problems. Uh-huh. Health problems. Where am I? Right. So, uh, you know, change your mind. Four sources of healing. Read Leviticus 11. I could elaborate on that, but I'm not going to. Drink zeal. I know lots of things we can do for our health, right? Okay, here's a big one. We're still on number two. Warning signs. Family problems. Proverbs 29, 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. No discipline will bring you shame. You cannot ignore the behavior, and that's, that's what's happening in, um, across, the, across the nation, actually. Um, they, parents ignore the behavior, and I don't know, do they think it goes unnoticed? Everybody else notices you know, or better yet, they have this mindset like, uh, uh, they'll grow out of it. Listen, I get those 17-year-olds. They haven't grown out of it. In fact, they become bigger problems because that is no longer the issue. Now it's a bigger thing, but you didn't discipline that. So guess what? You don't know how to discipline this. It's a problem. Here's the thing I think is um, really stood out to me. The rod and reproof give wisdom. If we think of discipline as giving wisdom instead of punishment, I think that that changes the game. That's a game changer, right? So I want you to remember that. Um, you know, Proverbs nineteen twenty six. It's 
It's great. Basically, I'll, I'll just tell you, don't waste your father's wisdom. That's basically what it says. And, and, and don't, you know, don't put away your mother's godly advice. That's what that says. I like this one. Proverbs 19, 26. All you teenagers in the house need to write this one down. Again, we're talking about warning signs, shame that comes from family problems. Proverbs 19, 26. Kids who lash out against their parents are an embarrassment and a disgrace. Ooh, that's kind of strong. That came from the Message Bible. <clears throat> are we doing okay? Listen, I don't want to talk to you about this, but God said... Okay, so now let's, there's the children. Now let's go to the spouse. Uh-oh. <laughs> what kind of shame can possibly come from our spouse? Well, a spouse that doesn't serve God and we're trying to cover it up and make, make everybody think that they are. Uh -oh. You know, um, uh, a spouse that gets saved and bypasses us um, and that's kind of shameful. Like, how, how has that happened? I've been serving God for 20 years and all of a sudden, you know, my spouse gets saved and they're on fire and they're making me look bad because they're bypassing me. Shame, 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 shame. right? Or you're a helpmate, you know, but you're not helping. Shame. Sh shameful, disgraceful. That's really why I retired so I could be a better helpmate. Honest to God, truth. I, I, I used to be able to do both. And then I got to the place where, you know, 61, I'm, I'm too old to burn the candle at both ends anymore. I can't go on four and five hours of sleep to get it all done. I truly, I could have taught for a couple more years. Well, maybe. <laughs> no, I really, I could have. I can do anything, right? I can do all things through Christ. No, but, um, but I want, but that was my heart. I want to be a helpmate. But how many helpmates out there, and your husband is not your helpmate, you are the helpmate. How many helpmates out there are not helping? Shame. Shameful. Okay, so, you know, I could talk about all these other things. Parents that lose their children in an accident. In my 18 years at um, North Branch, four high school students were killed in accidents. It was shameful, just awful. And um, I, one was sickness and disease, but the other three were um, car accidents in the morning on the way to school. And do you know the next year we had like 14, 15 snow days because the individual that makes that decision, can you imagine? what you have to deal with, and the shame. Or the parent going, oh man, I knew the roads were bad. I should never have let them drive. Or, or on goes the story. Or I knew they were an inexperienced driver. I should not have been letting them drive on, you know, questionable roads. I mean, all kinds of scenarios. You've got your scenarios. I'm gonna leave you with one more in this category. Again, what are we talking about? Warning signs. Do you know that I was mortified like a month before school ended about, um, I took a poll in my classroom and in my classroom of 26 kids, a third of them lived with their moms and dads and the rest of them lived with grandparents. Shameful. Shameful. Now, there are all kinds of reasons, and I, 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 everybody has their reason, and I get it, and whatever, but all I'm saying is that is family problems. That's shameful. Okay, so the third. Oh, it. G yes, of course. I'm sorry if, I, um, if, if I'm leaving that out. Isn't that the obvious? Um, that God wants us free. I told you, you're going to have a testimony from today. I told you that he came today to make his church free. He said that the church was hiding in their shame and he doesn't want you to have to do that. Amen. Right? Amen. So the third category, shame um, is bondage of confusion causing delay. Bondage of confusion causing delay. 
And so here's the scripture I have, uh, 1 Kings 18, 21. It's basically, um, why, are you, uh, why are you going back and forth between two opinions? You can read it for yourself, but let's just cut to the chase. Why are you, why are you halting to two opinions? Why can't you make up your mind? Why can't you, if the Lord be the Lord, if God be God, then choose this side. If Baal be Baal, then go that way. But why, why cannot you choose? Not too hard. What is the delay? What has caused you to delay? It doesn't matter. Everybody has a reason. Everybody has an excuse, right? But he's going to make that, he's going to disintegrate that excuse today. So in um, closing, because I want time for the altar call. In closing, go with me to Romans 1.15. One fifteen, and it says, you probably can imagine what it's going to say. I hope you're going to read this with me. Romans one fifteen. This is what you will be saying when God makes you free. This is, these are the words that you're going to begin to say. So as much as is, as in me is, right? So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Michigan. I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Pennsylvania. I'm ready to preach the gospel at my place of employment. I'm ready to pre preach the gospel at my cul-de-sac. I'm ready to preach the gospel in my neighborhood. I'm ready to preach the gospel in every client and customer that I have. I'm ready to preach the gospel. But you can't do it as long as you got shame. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel. And that is why the churches are not growing because there is shame and you don't want to preach the gospel because you're hiding in this place of like, what if they find out? What if they know? I can't, I have, my words have no power. But when God makes you free today, I want you to begin to say, I am ready to preach the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews first and also to the, to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. The just shall live by faith. When I am not ashamed of the gospel, I am not confused. When I am not ashamed of the gospel, I am not delaying anything that needs to be done. When I am not ashamed of the gospel, I am not being a disgrace or I'm not being disgraced. I am not disappointed. That's when I am not ashamed of the gospel. Shame comes because of all the things we talked about. And are you, a, are you ashamed of the gospel? That it hasn't worked for you? That it hasn't made you free? Yeah. That the truth of the word, my Lord, we get the word here. The truth of the word um, should be enough. Jesus cast out spirits with his word. Yeah. He didn't have a two hour you know, altar call. He just spoke the word. So, we got to let the word become life in our life. It's the only solution to shame. Okay. And how many want to be free today? Yes. Romans, I'm ending with this. Romans 1.18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God, for God has showed it to them. But they did not repent. God has showed it to you today. So where will you be? What category will you be? Let me leave you with some sobering words that says you've heard it now. <laughs> so there's no excuse. You've heard it. You've been reminded there is a door of salvation that's open for you today. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, then you need to walk through that door this morning. Yes. 
If you're dealing with shame today that you can't seem to let go of or that has, you know, created all these problems um, for you, well, then you need to walk through this door of deliverance also called the door of escape. I want you to escape that shame today. God wants you to escape that shame today. If you have not got your dance on, if you can't get in the groove, then you need to walk through one of the four doors that are available for you today. If you cannot um, uh, break through, pass through of the shame that has been that you've been dealing with, then these doors are for you. If you haven't been part of the house, you might not know there's four doors. But let me just tell you today: first, it starts with salvation. If you're not saved, start there. And if you are saved, then it goes to today is the day to walk through the door of escape. Escape the things that have taunted you, that have disgraced you, that have disappointed you, that have caused you to hide, that have caused you to justify. And, and God sees it and he wants you to be free today. If you will confess the sin to him, you don't have to confess it to me, but confess it to him. He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you. And on that note, I say, let the miracles begin. It's a miracle that every one of you would walk out of here shame free. It's, it'd be a miracle it would be a miracle because only the power of God can, can do this for you. It would be a miracle today to see this house dance again. Yeah. It'd be a miracle for this house to get its groove on. Yeah. It, it, if, and what I mean by that is everybody. The house is comprised of everybody. Yeah. It'd be a miracle. Amen? Amen? Father, we just praise you today. We started out assembling today to praise you today, and we continue to praise you for your goodness and for all the things that you have done good in our life. And even today, confronting some things that maybe were unpleasant, but giving us the solution and the answer, that's a good father. So we love you today, Father, and we say we will obey the things that you pointed out and the things, the questions the questions that you're asking us, we will answer. And therefore, we will lead ourselves to the altar to confess this shame to you that we may be cleansed and be made free. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So online, Go ahead and chat in if you're at the altar in the house. Make your way to the altar. And listen, this is between you and God. But listen, you're, <laughs> it's almost scary to say, but if you want to be free, you can't leave until you are. And that's today. Does that mean shame won't try and visit you down the road? Well, probably it will. But you know the answer. You know why it comes. You will avoid those things. Amen.